Hello guys, how are you doing today? You welcome back to my channel Fun with Physics. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at levers, unit 8.11 section of our textbook, complete physics for Cambridge Second One. Now at the end of the lesson today, you you'll be able to know what a lever is and how we can use a lever to do a work that is to actually lift a load okay now have you ever thought about uh, how the ancient egyptians were able to build the huge pyramids that we see today have you ever thought about how they were able to lift huge blocks like what we have on the left hand side here then place them on rollers drag them to the building sites okay and then use them did you ever talk about that how were they actually able to lift this that's a major question we need to ponder on Any idea? All right. They actually used lever to do that. Now below this, at the left hand, right hand side, you can see a gun using a straight bar supported on a knife edge or a fulcrum. Okay, or what you can also call a pivot okay, to lift this heavy rock. Okay, now for you to do this, you have to push this down, isn't it? He has to push this down to be able to lift this. Okay, so this simple arrangement here is what we call a lever. So, what is a lever? Levers are tools, or we can sometimes call them simple machines. All tools as uh, basic tools are simple machines. Okay, the people used to make work easier for them. Some levers are used to lift things to overcome uh, resistance or load. Okay, like what is happening in this. Uh, picture here now can you see the guy pushing down on this to lift this load here now did you notice that the straight bar is supported somewhere here on a knife edge or a fulcrum what you can also call a pivot depending on you did you notice it so lever gives us an advantage by making work easier what it actually means is that it multiplies whatever effort is put on one side okay to lift a heavy load on the other side okay so since it's a force multiplier we see that it has a mechanical advantage okay so things that are actually force multipliers have mechanical advantage or we can say has an advantage okay what it actually implies is that the ratio of the loads to force here must be bigger than one okay anyway that's a lesson for some other time right now what leverage can a lever give leverage is actually a term used by financial experts to meet support it could be financial support in form of loan or whatever okay so in other words what support can a lever give now what do we notice about the girl here trying to lift this on a normal ground she will be able to lift the load directly with her hands okay but using this straight bar supported on a pivot here she can be able to lift this okay now notice that the distance from the pivot here to the point where she's applying a force which we call the effort is longer or bigger 
than the distance from the load to the pilot. Okay, so a small force applied at the long arm is used to lift a load in the short arm. This means it multiplies whatever force is applied, okay, on one side to produce a bigger force to lift the load on the other side. Okay, so in other words, we can say the lever actually supports our effort, right? So this is why we call it a force multiplier, or we say it has an advantage, right? Okay, how lever works? How do you think lever work? Look at the picture here. This guy here is actually doing something, pushing down on this with a force, which we call the effort. Okay? And the load in order in, in turn is moving up. Right? Now notice that this straight bar is moving between, is dangling between the pivots. The pivot is actually a point where it can turn. Okay, so lever basically works because force applied on one arm produces what is called a turning effect. Okay, force applied here causes this to turn, produces a turning effect. Now there are other cases where we have a force producing a turning effect like the seesaw for instance. Okay, it's a common one, isn't it? Closing the door, you close the door or a window you notice a turning effect, especially if it has a hinge. A wheelbarrow also, okay, it's a case where we have a turning effect. So that's how a lever basically work. Parts of a lever. The lever essentially has four parts, which are the fulcrum, the point that can turn, the load, the point where we apply at a weight, the effort, the point where we can apply effort, and the straight bar. Okay? Or you can call it the lever arm if you want. Okay? Now, the force you exert on the bar is called the effort. Take note. Take note. Whatever force you exert that is exerted here, okay, is called the effort. So I'll keep using effort, effort, effort. Whenever I use a force, know that I'm referring to the force that is being exerted by the person that is to do the work, that is to move the load, okay? That is to lift the load. The person here, okay, whatever force exerted here is called the effort. Now, number two, the weight of the object you lift is actually called, referred to, the load. Take note, okay? So, in case I use load, load, don't get it twisted, I'm only referring to the weight that is being lifted here, okay? And the bar rotates about the pivot or the fulcrum. The fulcrum is actually that point, that point, that knife edge where the bar can rotate, alright? So, we can... Think of a fulcrum as a point that can cause something to turn. In the door, you have the hinges as a fulcrum. You can create your own fulcrum, okay, wherever you are now. Place your hand on your paper and try to rotate it, okay? Make sure you pin your hand very well on the paper. Notice that the paper is rotating about your hand. So your hand there, that point where you placed it and your hand becomes the fulcrum, right? The elbow is a fulcrum, the elbow. You get that? See? My hands can actually rotate about my elbow. Alright? Okay, now um, let's still look at uh, the lever a little bit more. Now, we will notice that the distance from the fulcrum here to the effort is bigger or longer than the distance from the load to the fulcrum okay so if you are to lift a load easier it is better to place the fulcrum closer to the load than the effort okay so we can say that the further the effort is from the fulcrum the easier it is to lift a load all right okay 
Now, for us to understand liver, hmm, uh, we need to classify them. Okay, it's not that proper to explain the different types of liver without necessarily classifying it for easier understanding. Okay, so livers are not just the straight bars we talked about earlier. We have, have other examples like the hammer, the wheelbarrow, tongues, the one you use to um, pick your stuffs, like a test tube, take it close to the bones and burner, and so on. The broom, you use to sweep. The opener, that is a bottle opener, scissors, pliers, just name them. There are a lot of them, okay? And these can actually be classified into three to help us understand them better, okay? Now, the first class is called the first order or the class one level. In this first class here, the fulcrum is between the effort and the load. The second class is called the second order or the second class level or class two level. Okay, in this one, the load is between the effort and the fulcrum like you see in this place. And the third class is the class three lever or the third order lever. Okay, this kind of lever, the effort is between the fulcrum and the load. I hope you still know what the fulcrum means, the point where something can turn. Okay? The effort is the point where the force is applied. The load is actually the weight that is being lifted. Okay, let's quickly move forward for to elaborate more on the different classes of labor. But before we do that, you can actually remember this using this mnemonic here, flea. Flea, okay, for the first one, flea one, two, three. F means the first order lever, the fulcrum between. L is for the second order lever, load between. E is for the third order lever, effort between. Okay, let's quickly move ahead. Now, class one lever. These are examples of class one lever by the right hand side here, okay. But um, let's look at it. This is, a, this is just a simple diagram of a class 1 lever, how it will look like. In a class 1 lever, the fulcrum is in the middle and the effort and the load are outside. That means the fulcrum is between the load and the effort. Okay? So this type of lever are effort or force multiplier. Multipliers. Okay? Because a small effort is used to lift a heavy load. A small effort here is used to use to lift a heavy load. So we can say they are force multipliers. Right? Example: the seesaw. You can use just a small thing like this to lift this little girl here, depending on the distance between the pilot. Okay. The crowbar, that's a crowbar, a little bit bent here, just to lift this. Push it down and then you lift this. The plier of scissors, the, the claw hammer, and so on. Okay, now what do you notice about all of these um, class 1 levers? What did you notice about them? What did you notice about the position of the fulcrum, the moving point, at the middle like Thick, right? So the fulcrum here is at middle, fulcrum here is at middle, middle of the effort where you put your hand and where you hold the piece of whatever you're cutting. Fulcrum is at, is at the middle, right? This is the fulcrum, the middle for the seesaw, the middle. Now here, fulcrum, the claw hammer, fulcrum is at the point here where the hammer can actually rotate about the table. When you place on the table to remove the nail. Okay. All right. Now remember that I said there are force multiplier, and they are force multiplier because you use a little force to lift the heavy load. And notice that the distance from the effort to the fulcrum is longer. Okay. Take note of that. Now let's move to the next one, the class two lever. 
Now, the diagrams you see here, the picture on the right hand side here, are actually the class two levers. Okay? The first one here is a wheelbarrow, the second one here is a nutcracker, and the third one here is a bottle opener. Alright? They are actually class two lever. Now, how are they different from the class one lever? The load is between the effort and the fulcrum in this case, okay? The load is between the effort and the fulcrum. Now, let's look at this. Let's start with this wheelbarrow. This is the load, this is the fulcrum. The fulcrum is at the wheel, isn't it? This is the point that can actually rotate, right? Now, notice that the distance between from the fulcrum to the effort here is longer than the distance from the, from the load to the fulcrum, okay? This has a longer distance. Effort to fulcrum has a longer distance, okay? The same thing applies to this knot cracker. This is the fulcrum here. The knot here represents the load. And this is the point where you apply your effort, isn't it? And the opener. The opener here, the point where you hold the cap of the, of the, the bottle is actually the load because you have to pull it up, isn't it? That's the load, this is the load, right? Now this fulcrum is the point that can actually move on the bottle here. And the effort is where you apply, where you actually hold to apply your force, right? Okay, this type of lever is also a force multiplier, just like the class one lever, because a small effort is used to move a heavy load, okay? You can use a small effort to crack the nut, a small effort to move this heavy load here about or to lift it. Here, a small effort is used to remove the cap of the bottle. Alright? Okay, now the third class lever, class 3 lever, is this. For the class 3 levers, the effort is between the load and the fulcrum. Okay? Did you remember what I said about fulcrum earlier? The moving part, right? Like my, okay? This is my fulcrum, isn't it? The moving part. And this is my what? This is where I apply the force, my muzzle, okay? Whatever I'm holding the glass here is the load, right? Okay. So, this lever has the effort in the middle and the load and the fulcrum on the ends. Okay? So that means the effort is between the load and the fulcrum. Now let's start with this. Now notice that this muzzle here is very close to the load compared to the elbow, the fulcrum. Uh, the fulcrum is actually the elbow, isn't it? Notice that it's closer. If I should use my ruler to measure, it's going to be closer than this one. Okay, so we can see that the force or the effort is between the fulcrum and the load or resistance. Remember, we can call load a resistance, okay? Because trying is what we are actually trying to overcome, to lift. This type of lever is a distance and speed multiplier. It's not a force multiplier. Okay, because here we use even a bigger force to move the load or to lift the load. Okay? Alright? We can't say it has advantage like that. We, because we are applying a bigger force. Okay? But rather it multiplies the distance and the speed. Like if I'm handling this cup, I can move it very fast too and to a longer distance, isn't it? Using a bigger force, right? Like what this guy is doing, okay? The same thing applies to the sugar tongue. You apply the effort between to hold this sugar. You can move it backward, forward, much more distance, okay? For, in, a, in a longer distance and even quickly. The fulcrum here is not is uh, outside, it's not inside. Okay, here yeah, the effort is actually inside between. 
All right? Now, let's review this one more time. The step of lever is a distance and speed multiplied because a large effort is used to move something through a large distance and very fast. Now, notice that the effort, notice that the effort or force is closer to the load than the fulcrum. These are the examples, okay? Another example is the broom, okay? Okay, now, um, for the closure, how many uh, types of levers can you identify here? Or how many classes of levers can you identify here? Class 1, class 2, class 3. Which one has the um, effort at the middle? Okay, comment on the comment section, okay, or, or on Google Classroom. Which one has effort at the middle? Okay, which ones are called, which of these are called actually force multipliers? Why are they force multiplier? Please comment on the comment section below or on Google Classroom, okay? Now, why is the third order lever, third class levers called a distance multiplier? Why are they called distance multiplier? Why do we need more force to do the work? Okay, instead of a little force in the third class lever. Please comment on the comment section, okay? I'd like to see your comment to know uh, what to do next or to know if you under, actually understand. If you have any question, please comment, drop your comment. I will actually get back to you. Thank you.